Hello guys and welcome to part 2 in my advanced 2D platformer pathfinding series. In this video, we will start to add the code we need to put the points on the graph. Start by right clicking on the tile map pathfind node and click on the touch script. Make sure this is a C sharp script and we're going to save this guy as tile map pathfind.cs. So click on create. First of all, we need to have ourselves a representation of these points because the A star nodes don't contain enough information to perform the platformer pathfinding. So for this, we're going to need our own class. And we're going to call this class point info. And this guy have the following booleans to define what kind of tile this is. And the tile can have multiple states at the same time. So it can be a full tile and it can also be a right wall at the same time. For instance, this guy down here, it's a fall tile because it can fall from this position all the way down here. And it's also a right wall tile. And at the same time, it's a left edge. So we need to keep track of multiple states for all the points. And the boolean is position point. It's going to be used in the pathfinding later. Then we have the point ID and the position. And these guys represent the point ID for the point in the A star graph and also its position. So it is basically information that we copy over to our point info as well. We have an empty constructor so we can create a point easily. And we also have a special constructor that takes in the point ID and the position so we can set them immediately. Next, we are going to work on the tile map pathfinding clause. And for starters, we're going to have a couple of variables. We have the Boolean here, show the by graph, so we can toggle these lines and the points on and off. We have three constants here, so we don't just type numbers inside of the code. Next, we have the A star 2D graph, and this is the built in clause in the Godot engine that is performing the A star pathfinding. Then we have an array directed to I. And this guy needs to have a quick fix. And we are going to add using go.collections here. And this guy is the list of the used tiles in the tile map, which is all the tiles that are placed inside of the map. Then we're going to have a packed scene with a graph point, so we can instantiate this guy whenever we need to in code. And then we're going to have a point info list. And this is a list with all of our custom points for all the points in the graph. Next, inside of the render method, we are first going to load in the graph point and there's a simple way to get the path. You just right click the scene and click on copy path and you can just paste it in like so. Then we are going to get all the use tiles in the tile map and store them in the use tiles array right here. Next, we are going to add a new method called the build graph and we are going to call this guy inside of the rhythm method and inside of the build graph method we're going to call the add graph points method and we are now going to start to implement this guy. So just underneath the build graph method, we're going to add the add graph points method. And this guy is going to loop through all the tiles we have in the tile map. And the first method we're going to add in here is the add left edge point method. And this method adds all these points here on top of the left edges. So just underneath this guy, we are first going to define the region. So let's add this method in. Now we need to add a helper method that we're going to use in a lot of different places. And this method is called tile above exist. So it takes in the vector to I tile. Then it runs the built in method get cell source ID, which is basically get the tile on the map. And we're going to get the tile from our collision layer. And we're going to pass in the current tile position, but with Y minus one. So it's going to look one tile above. So if we are on this guy here and it looks above, it's going to see that this tile is empty. And if that is true, it's going to return false. Otherwise, it's going to return true. So inside of our add left edge point method, we're now going to check here if a tile above exists. And if that is true, we're just going to return out of the method. So if we're checking this tile here and we look above, okay, there's a tile here. Then we know that this tile cannot be a left edge. Then to know if this is a left edge, we're simply going to look one tile to the left. Let's say we are on this guy here, and this guy is empty, and we know that the top is empty. Then we know that we have a left edge right here. We're getting the tile on the collision layer, and we're passing in the tile position, but one tile to the left. And if this guy is empty, then we're going to get the tile above. So we're standing on this guy right here. That we want the point to be added one tile above because the player can't be walking inside of the tiles but on top of them. And next, we are going to call the method tile already exists in graph. So just underneath the add graphics points method, 
we're going to add the tile already existing graph method. And it takes in the tile that we are checking. So first of all, we're going to map the position to local coordinates. That's because the graph points here are in local coordinates. Tile coordinates is very simple. The top tile is 0, 0. If you go down one tile, you're going to have 0, 1 in the y-axis, 0, 2. But the points are in local coordinates. So say this screen is now 1000 pixels wide. And we take the middle point here. Then it's going to be roughly 500 pixels in. So that's the difference between map coordinates and local coordinates. So first up, we're going to check if the graph contains any points. Then we're going to find the closest point in the graph. Then, if these points have the same local coordinates, then we know that the point already exists in the graph. So we're going to return the point ID here. If the node wasn't found, then we're going to return minus 1 in here. Let's scroll down to our method and continue. Now that we have the existing point ID, let me check here if the point has not already been added. And if that is the case, then we're going to get the next available point ID. And then we're going to create a new point info. And this is going to take in the point ID. And then we're going to call map to local. So we pass in the local coordinates for the tile above. Then we flag that the point is a left edge. Then we add the point info to the list of point infos. And finally, we're going to add the same point into the asr 2 d graph so we can perform pathfinding on it later. Else, we are going to call point info list and do a single on it. And now we need to do a quick fix and add using system.link. And by calling single, we are looking for the point that is equal to the existing point we found up here. And we're going to flag that this point is now a left edge as well. Next, we need to add a method so we can draw these points onto the map. So inside of this guy, first of all, we're going to add a visual point to the tile above. But if the point already exists, we're going to add the tile above, but with a new color here. And it's this blue color that you see down here. So just underneath the tile already existing graph method, we're going to add the method add visual point. And this guy takes in the tile, an optional parameter for color, and an optional parameter for scale. So first of all, we check here if the graph should not be shown. If that is the case, then we're just going to return other method. Otherwise, we are going to instantiate a new visual point. We check here if a custom color has been passed in. And if so, we're going to modulate the color to the passed in color here. Then we check if a custom scale has been passed in and make sure it has value range. If that is the case, we're going to set the point scale to the passed in scale here. Next, we're going to map the position of the visual point to the local coordinates. Because the tile that is passed in, is coming in as tile coordinates, so we convert this to local coordinates, so it's going to be placed correctly on the map. And finally, we add the visual point as a child to the scene. So we can press Ctrl S to save. Go back to the Google Editor, click on the main scene, then right click the main node, click on Instantiate Child Scene, select the tile map Pathfind, and click on Open, and click on Play. Then click on Select Current for the main scene. And right now you can see all the left edges has been added here to the map as white points. All right. In the next video, we're going to add all the other points to the map. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and see you in the next video. Bye for now.